Hey guys, normally when I'm making a build, I pick a skill, get as much damage as I can while still getting close to 6k effective HP and then what's left goes into defensive layers. But this time it was completely the opposite. And the final result did surprise me because I was still able to get more damage than I even planned. So the goal of this build was basically to take a very old school item which is Aegis Aurora shield, build some armor, not like extreme amount of armor and then just to see how the old school item performs these days. So this is more like an experiment and this video will also go into my what's unique about this unique video series because this isn't really a build that you can easily replicate because it does require pretty specific and very expensive items. Well actually you only need one very specific and very expensive item which is the uh, skin of the lord with the right colors and iron reflex. I think overall I probably spent nearly 40 exalts for this build. And again this is just an experiment to test an old school item. It's not a recommendation for a build but maybe someone forgot about this item and this will inspire to do some similar build. Because Aegis Aurora is definitely still pretty strong, especially how easy it is to get a lot of armor these days. I also did quite a bit of testing what I can and cannot face tank. I can farm tier 16 maps very reliably and face tank most of the things but there are still a couple things that just destroy this build like degen and very heavy elemental hits. Although I was able to face tank shaper balls but not all the time. I was able to face tank Shaper Slam, Shaper Slam during Uber Elder fight, Minotaur was a joke, Shaper's balls most of the time could face tank but it's just not smart to just face tank everything. Even Cirrus Awakening 8, I could face tank laser, however I always kept running out of my flash to remove bleed and I did not have an affected by corrupting blood jewel. But to be honest this build can be even more tanky. You would have to sacrifice quite a bit of damage but you could very easily get divine flash, anoint a double hair's rest node and it would have kept hair's rest and it would be much tankier against all the damage. And another however, I do not want to do that because the bill has ramp up time for damage and after 5 seconds that's when you get the most damage. And uh, before that the damage did not feel that great. I do have close to 4 million DPS but that's, I don't think that is very reliable numbers because not all the balls hit all the time and it does have quite a lot of conditional things. Now more about the build and what exactly I'm doing with this. So the build is basically max block, I recover uh, around 1.6-1.7k ES when I block, almost 90,000 armor, elemental ailment immunity, ES regen, life leech, crit, inquisitor. And I mainly chose storm boost because I haven't played with it in a while and it actually does have very good single target DPS as well as pretty pleasant clear speed. However this build is not designed for clear speed, I have no explosions to help with the clear speed. Also you are much more tankier while channeling and getting infusion, getting other conditional things while stationary. So this build idea seemed to work the best for channeling skills. That's why I picked the storm burst. But as you know storm burst works better with the increased skill effect duration which means ramp up time. Now the reason why I didn't go for like extreme amount of armor is that I'm not getting damage with armor. With 100,000 armor you would be recovering 2,000 energy shield each time you block and that was kind of my goal. Now because the amount of life pool is pretty low I had to get pretty decent amount of hair's resistance. And because of that it was hard to get the right mods on the right items. So for example my gloves and boots don't even have any energy shield. Also the easiest way to get a lot of armor is to use grace and convert evasion into armor through iron reflex. But traveling that far would mess up the rest of the build. So the only way I could still get Iron Reflex is with Skin of the Lords. The 100% increased global defense on that body armor works very well because it boosts your evasion armor and energy shield. But getting at least 4 blue colors on this body armor is very expensive and I like I said paid 20 exalts. Or maybe it was 25, I can't remember. The next cool item that synergizes very well with this build is Cerberus Limb. With Cerberus Limb you do get decent amount of damage from it but also you get half percent of spell damage leash as life if equipped shield has at least 30% chance to block and Aegis Aurora has 32. You also get flat energy shield per 5 armor on equipped shield. In fact I can still even quality this shield even more. And on equipping Cerberus Limb I actually lose 500 ES. And lastly Cerberus Limb also gives 20 flat evasion per 5 energy shield on equipped shield and that uh, <laughs> evasion becomes armor. So on equipping Cerberus Limb I also lose 5000 armor. That's not counting the conditional buffs and flasks. 
For more armor, I am also using Memory Vault, which essentially gives you flat armor per reserve mana. And for auras, I went with Determination, Grace, Wrath, and Skitterbots, and I'm gonna talk how I managed to squeeze those in. For that, you basically need Owl Surprising and two Medium Class Rituals, and of course, Enlighten. And I could have done it in two different ways. With Owl Surprising, you either make Grace or Determination a reserve no mana, and then you use Cluster Jewels to get Determination or Grace to have 30% reduced mana reservation on two of those jewels. The jewels can be pretty expensive because, especially if you want to also roll Stalwart Commander, which does give Grace Determination and Discipline 30% increased aura effect. But the Grace Owl Surprising was like two exalts cheaper, so I went with the Grace Owl Surprising and then crafted the Determination Reduced Mana Reservation two jewels. Also, Dexterity was uh, very needed for this build. However, I was lucky to be able to get Dexterity on other items like gloves, ring, and of course, Owl Surprising for Grace has Dexterity. I also managed to get Watcher Sai for flat armor while affected by Determination and extra physical as extra lighting damage while affected by Wrath. And I'm using Timeless Jewel to get Inner Conviction, which comes from Milton Fate Dominus. But I only have 5 power charges. Because Stormburst is uh, physical converted into lighting and only 50%, I had to get another 50% from elsewhere, and that comes from gloves and one note on the passive skill tree. But I have Conversion Watcher Sai is very expensive, like 9 exalts minimum. So don't bother with that. Now, as always, I will include Path of Building import code in video description, but I'm gonna go over my items, skills, and passive skill tree one more time very fast. Cerberus Limb, Memory Vault, Aegis Aurora, Owl Surprising Grace 1, Skin of the Lords with Iron Reflex and Red Colors, then Gloves for Conversion and Dex if you can, Boots. Uh, boots you can actually get quite a, lot, quite a bit of damage with gain, physical damage as extra lighting, Crusaders, Influence. One of the things I went with the Assassin's Mark because this is only for a single target, I wanted to automate as many things as possible. Another ring is just uh, physical damage as extra fire which is quite a bit of damage and just resistances. I tried to, to get Hears Rest as much as possible on all the items. Uh, the belt as well, Hears Rest and then craft hybrid Hears Rest. For Flask, Diamond Flask with the Katarina Crit Enchantment. Instead of Sulphur you probably should be using Aziris Promise that's more damage and some Hears Rest, but I'm just so lazy. As you can see, I'm even still using level 42 life flask. People keep asking why I use that. That's because I'm lazy. I hate changing flasks. And then granite flask. Now for skills and links. Stormburst link with hypothermia, infused channeling, increased duration, elemental focus. And uh, energy leech is not that good, but I do swap it for concentrated effect. And actually, right before recording this video, Path of Building had an update which adds support for infused sharing, duration scaling or something. I, I'm not sure what it is, but I have more damage than I planned. <laughs> In my helmet, I have increased duration, molten shell, efficacy, and while righteous fire, I have molten shell on my left click, and each time I activate, I get 10,000, uh, what do you call it, absorption shield, which lasts for 6 seconds. Now, Infused Shining also gives me physical and lighting damage mitigation. And Hypothermia works because I have Skitterbots. So yeah, like I said, I have Skitterbots, uh, Wrath and uh, Enlighten in my shield. Actually, you could even corrupt the shield to get plus 2 to suck it at the Aura Gems. Next, I have Frost Shield linked with Arcane Surge and uh, Flame Dash. And this is actually pretty important because it also gives base critical strike chance and uh, another shield absorption. Then I have Orb of Storm linked with increased critical strike chance. Power charge on crit and faster casting. This is to generate power charges on a single target, but when I'm blocking, I'm also generating power charges, so it's very easy to sustain power charges while mapping. Then I do have all quality diversion determination. You don't really need this, and it's not actually calculated in Path of Building, and I'm not sure if it's calculated in Hector screen. Maybe something went wrong, but I'm only getting 88,000 armor in game tooltip. And this Diversion Determination has you and nearby allies gain 10% of evasion as extra armor. And I do have quite a lot of evasion which then gets converted into armor so maybe that's why it didn't work? I, I'm not sure. Maybe someone can explain that. But you don't need Diversion Determination. I paid like 10 exalts for that. I also have Diversion Tempest Shield. At 20 quality it does give an extra 1% chance to block attacks and spell. And lastly Grace linked with Empower. And now the passive skill tree, Inquisitor, and as usual, the crit notes and then the pious path. Now I could spend like another 10 minutes talking about passive skill tree and uh, what options there are, but you can just check the path of building import code. And I'll just quickly mention a couple things. First, large cluster jewel for spell damage, 
you want mage hunter which is very important which gives spell block and a chance to get the power charge when you block and also conjured wall which does give a spell block if you have cast a spell recently and then on medium jewels you want two basically the same stalwart commander and then uncompromising or the one for the grace and then one uh, small cluster jewel went with the natural affinity which is uh, the almost identical which is wines which slow you down but you also get double damage uh, when stationary and less damage taken so you're actually getting 20% chance to deal double damage and 10% less damage taken after 5 seconds of standing and then another small cluster jewel I went with the second skin just to get more armor and more spell and uh, well don't really need attack block but mainly for spell block and then there is glancing blows and wavering stands very important you don't want to ever be stunned because when you're blocking you're also getting stunned a bit of block nodes here and there life yes armor two power charges and well you see the rest so yeah that pretty much covers the build and my final thoughts is that the aegis aurora is actually still a very good item and i should definitely start planning builds like that figuring out the defenses and then trying to squeeze in as much damage as possible and it did really surprise me how much damage i was still able to get still it may not be as fun as very fast and like very high burst and explode builds but being able to face tank end game bosses is pretty cool as for what's next, I'm actually not sure. There's still time before Mayhem and uh, Infinite Delve, which I'm definitely gonna be trying. Maybe I could still do one more meme build before that, but I really feel burnout and I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.